once you've got your lines drawn, you can uh, you can use a compass, just plop it down on the center of gravity and draw concentric circles, and these will show you how the air is flowing over the boomerang. But uh, I got my own little device that I've made here. It's uh, pretty much just a board. It's got some lines drawn across it. Just got a pen tied to it with a string, poking through a hole in the middle. And uh, what that allows me to do, to do is draw varying concentric circles. And as I wrap the string around the marker, it gets closer and closer towards the center. So we need to take two of our lines, place them on here, and we'll know that that's at least lined up. Keep on moving the boomerang until the center of gravity is where the string is poking through, and that looks pretty good to me. You can see the marker is tied to a string, and I can just twist it a little bit and bring it into range of the, uh, the boomerang. So I'll just start drawing concentric circles on here. And the purpose of these lines is, as I said before, to show uh, how the air is traveling over this. And how that air travels will determine uh, how your airfoil is shaped. So, I've now drawn all my concentric circles, and uh, that kind of indicates how the air is flowing over the various points. Like here, the air travels in the same direction as the lines as it hits the wing, so you divide this little section here by three, and that would be your high point, just like I had mentioned previously when making an airfoil. But when you get to here, it gets kind of complicated. At the point where, where these lines, the air flow is perpendicular to the edge of the wing, which is right there, see it's perpendicular? That means uh, at that point it has to switch, start or begin the transition from a leading edge to a trailing edge. And here, it's again uh, perpendicular. So that's also where it will begin to switch. At this point it's crucial that you decide whether it's a right-handed or left-handed boomerang. This right-handed boomerang spin in this direction, and left-handed boomerangs spin in that direction, and they're carved and shaped differently. So this will be a right-handed boomerang, so it's going to spin around like this. Uh, just like before, we end up looking at this line, and we divide it into three to make our airfoil. So, that's uh, one-third and two-thirds. I'm just eyeballing it here. Same thing with the next line. If you get good enough, you don't really have to eyeball both. You can even calculate the, the values if you want to be perfect, but I find out eyeballing it is good enough. So you just draw a bunch of lines on all the two-third marks. Now they start to get kind of long. The air that strikes the wing here travels along the line and exits it. it almost doesn't exit the wing, but this will be pretty much where the trailing edge stops. So we'll make that, measure this whole distance here, from there to there. Divide that by three, which is right about there. We'll do the next way. So we'll divide that line by three, etc. etc. And this one is pretty damn long, but I'll assume it just stops right there at the, uh, the halfway point. So we'll make the two-thirds point right about there. So you notice how the two-thirds point isn't always two-thirds of the way across the wing, as you might think. It's two-thirds of the airflow. And we'll do the final wing. Let's see. That's about two-thirds. Thir or one third, whatever. Yeah, and I'll treat that entire length there as uh, the cross section of the wing. So two thirds is about here. And that next one, about two thirds of the wing. It starts to get a little complicated when the wings join.
I'll do it over here. Now it's starting to get kind of crazy looking, but uh, we're almost at the point where we can start shaping this thing. Now that we have all our high points established, or most of them anyway, we can just connect the dots between all those points, and uh, that'll give us the high point of our wing. So I'm going to do that here. I'm just trying to cross through all the points where the little dines, lines cross the black lines. And finally on this side. And yeah, this is the tricky part here is when you're trying to blend the three together. See right here is where I cross the, uh, the halfway mark. Oh wait, here. So from that point onwards, it pretty much becomes a leading edge. So the whole purpose of all that was to find that line. Now what you do is you start your shaping with a file or a rasp. We're going to be following the same uh, procedure with this uh, boomerang of a different shape. This one's a bit more acute in its angle, and this shows some of the adaptability of this particular uh, technique. As with the other one, you'll see lines going parallel across the wing here as in the, the previous boomerang, but you'll notice up here, rather than smoothly flowing across the outer surface, this top section here actually become, becomes a wing, so you have to make that into an airfoil too. So we'll uh, show you how that works. Same as before. Divide that line into three. Yeah, right about there. Divide this line into three. Probably there. That one. So that's going to be a wing. A wing here, a wing here, and a wing here. Not all boomerangs are like that, but uh, this aluminum guy here. Um, that's uh, quite a bit different. The center of gravity was just about here on this boomerang. And what ended up happening is there was no lifting surface here, so it was just lifting surface kind of spread out along these entire two edges. As opposed to this one, since it's so sharp, the lifting surface is kind of messed up. <laughs> it'll be a little trickier to card this one, but it'll still fly properly. It kind of outlines the effectiveness of this technique because it points this stuff out to you. With the three-bladed boomerang, same technique applies, where the uh, the lines become perpendicular to the outside edge, which is like this entire ring. Uh, the top of the uh, the airfoil will end up being pretty much dead center in this entire area. I'm showing you this one just to kind of highlight how uh, I mentioned before when the lines that you've drawn here, the concentric circles, when they're parallel to the edges of the wing, that means the wing is pretty much neither leading edge nor trailing edge. So it's got to be like right in between the two. And as you can see, the purple line is dead center of this circle here. So to recap, uh, when it's parallel like this, airfoil is in the center of the wing, in the middle. When it's perpendicular to the wing, like here's the wing's edge, lines are perpendicular then it's closer to one-third of the wing's uh, distance. Okay, so here's our oaken boomerang with the same design drawn on it. Now, I gotta try to trace the, uh, the airfoil of this one, which is gonna be quite tricky, but the exact same procedure works. Okay, so here we have the bat <coughs> with the concentric circles drawn and all the dividing lines drawn at the one-third mark. Now you can see with this crazy shape of a wing, the high point ends up being kind of in weird places along the length of the wing. But uh, the technique still shows you where they are. Just in case you can't see, where I put the dots, I'm just try tilting this a bit. Hopefully they come up on the monitor. Just connect the dots from both sides. And there. That's kind of complicated looking, but that's the airfoil for the Batarang.